Today's video will explain the different types of loops. Hello, I'm James Helfrich. There are four main types of loops. There's an event control loop, a counter control loop, a sentinel control loop, and a collection control loop. This video will explain the four types of loops as well as the different variations. So loops, otherwise known as repetitive control structures, are defined as mechanisms allowing for the repeated execution of one or more statements. And in a flowchart, we can always see there's a loop because there's an arrow that moves back upstream, back up so we execute the same body more than once. Now it turns out there are exactly four different types of loops we see in the code. The first is called an event control loop. We're gonna keep repeating the same line of code or same collection of the lines of code until an event occurs. The next is a counter control loop. And here we're gonna repeat a fixed number of times. We usually know the number of times before the execution begins. Next, we have a sentinel control loop. We're gonna repeat until a gatekeeper, otherwise known as a sentinel, indicates the loop is finished. And finally, we have a collection control loop. We're gonna iterate through all the elements in a collection. Let's take a look at these four different types of loops in turn. Now, the first is the event control loop. And this is a loop that continues until a given event occurs. The number of repetitions is typically not known before the program starts. The controlling event could occur at the first iteration or after a million, we just don't know when. So here's an example of an event control loop. I'm gonna prompt the user for an age and I'm gonna keep prompting until the age is within a reasonable range. If it's not within the range, I'm gonna prompt again. If it is, then I will end. Now notice the user might get it right the first time or it might be the hundredth time. We don't know at the onset. Now an event control loop has two components. The first part is the controlling expression. The controlling expression is a Boolean expression which tells me whether I continue the loop or whether I exit. And the second is the loop body. This is the code that will be executed every iteration of the loop. So whenever we recognize that we're in an event controlled loop situation, we gotta ask ourselves these two questions and those two questions will tell us the two parts of the loop. The next is a counter control loop. A counter control loop is a repetitive control structure that executes a given block of code a fixed number of times. Counter control loops have four components. The first is the start. I want to know when the counting begins. The second is the end. I want to know when the counting ends. The third is the increment. I want to know how much I'm going to increase my counter by. And the final bit is the body loop, what happens every iteration. Whenever I have a counter control loop problem, I should ask myself these four questions, and these four questions have specific parts in the code. The next is a sentinel control loop, and perhaps this is the most difficult one to understand. And this is for more complicated scenarios when a variety of different types of events could change the loop characteristics. Now, a sentinel control loop is where the code is repeated until a gatekeeper called a sentinel indicates the loop is finished. The sentinel control loop are characterized by multiple decision points, each of which could possibly change our Boolean sentinel value. This Boolean variable is a loop control variable indicating when the loop terminates. So here's an example of a sentinel control loop. First of all, we have our sentinel was initialized to false. And now we have our, our loop body, which is only going to look at the sentinel. And then we have a collection of statements, each of which could possibly set the done equals false. Every time we have a, a sentinel control loop, we have these several parts. The initialization to set the sentinel. We have the control, which is the if statement or the while loop to determine whether we're going to continue looping. And then we have the body, and the body is going to set the sentinel. The next is a collection control loop. And this is any loop that iterates through all the members of a collection. The types of loops and their exact mechanism differ greatly from one programming language to the other, but there are five different types of collection control loops. An index or a counter variable iterates through the collection. Now notice the index, usually called i or index, is an integer between zero and n minus one, where n is the number of elements in the collection. Next is a pointer control loop, and a pointer refers to a specific element in the collection, and then I move that pointer using pointer arithmetic. Note, not all languages have pointers, so we can't always use a pointer control loop. The next is a linked list. A linked list is a collection of nodes, each connected by a pointer. Using a linked list loop, we go from one node to the other to the other until we reach the last node in the collection. Next, we have an iterator. An iterator is an abstraction of many different loop types that allows the user to use the same loop body to go through a collection regardless of how the collection is implemented. In other words, I can have a linked list or a binary tree or an array, and to the user, the iterator works exactly the same. And the last and newest member of the loop family is an instance loop, otherwise known as a for each loop. And here I don't have an index or a pointer 
or an iterator, but rather I have an instance of the value itself, which is going to move through the collection. You can learn more about the different types of loops in the loop chapter of the software design textbook.